the Middle East, and the United States are bound by history, shared interests, and hope for a peaceful and prosperous future. Today, we need these partnerships more than ever. In the face of growing challenges, we need to go beyond the headlines to understand each other and our shared future. Since 1946, MEI, the Middle East Institute, has been working to find solutions to the region's problems, build bridges, and promote dialogue through arts and education. What is the role of the United States? Our premier policy institute. A Syrian Kurdish artist. Our pioneering art gallery. And our dynamic education center make MEI an integrated think tank in the heart of Washington, D.C. Come to MEI and be inspired. Consider new voices and perspectives on Middle East policy. Interact with the region's artists, musicians, and filmmakers. Michaela Mabuki. Learn a new language and explore the region's history. We see a future where youth have hope and women are empowered. We believe the region can move past conflict to pursue peace and realize its full economic potential. Together, we can build a future where knowledge and understanding bring opportunity so that peace is possible and prosperity is shared. Please join us. Welcome to the Middle East Institute's 75th Anniversary Celebration and Awards Ceremony. Thank you for joining us. I'm Vivian Salama and I'm so excited to be back here this year as we mark MEI's 75th anniversary. To reflect this important milestone, we have a great program ahead of us, one that celebrates MEI's mission to advance peace, prosperity, and partnership. This year's special guests and award recipients truly embody these core principles and work daily to strengthen U.S. Middle East bonds. I'm speaking to you now from the MEI Art Gallery, which promotes the voices of artists from the Middle East and its diaspora. The gallery has hosted numerous exhibitions featuring artists from across the region, including this current exhibit of art from the UAE. To launch today's celebration of MEI's 75th anniversary, we'd like to share with you a brief look back at its history. Since its founding 75 years ago, the Middle East Institute has been a vital source of information and understanding of a complex region. After World War II, U.S. engagement with the Middle East grew significantly. Leading Americans in policy and academic circles saw the need for greater knowledge about the region and stronger people-to-people -people ties. Among them was George Camp Kaiser. He was an architect by training and had traveled widely in the Middle East. Kaiser assembled a board of foreign policy experts in Washington, D.C., and on May 8, 1946, the Middle East Institute was established. From the start, MEI's expertise and resources were in high demand. It convened conferences and lectures by the era's leading experts. Its peer-reviewed journal helped launch the careers of future academics and it promoted the region's arts and heritage through exhibitions and cultural events. Over the decades, MEI has helped shape U.S.-Middle East relations by convening top policymakers and regional leaders. It's taught languages to generations of students and professionals, and it's introduced new audiences to the region's rich culture. Today, it's ranked among the top think tanks in the world and is the number one Middle East-focused policy institute in the U.S. It's now my pleasure to introduce the chairman of MEI's Board of Governors, Richard Clark. Mr. Clark is a distinguished former U.S. government official and a renowned author. On behalf of the Board of Governors of the Middle East Institute, welcome to our annual awards ceremony. 
this year celebrating MEI's 75th year. Yes, it's 75, but that's not old. MEI is young, vibrant, more vibrant than ever, more active than ever. And we are continuing our great tradition of giving awards to outstanding people who have made a significant contribution to understanding between the United States and the Middle East. And now to tell you all about it, here is our president of the Institute, the esteemed Dr. Paul Salem. Thanks, Dick. And thank you for your leadership of the Board of Governors. And thank you to everyone who's joined us today. As MEI marks its 75th anniversary, we have our sights set on the next 75 years. Yes, there will be challenges ahead, but we also know that this is a region with a young, vibrant population, with great potential for economic innovation, cultural production, and progress. We see a Middle East where old adversaries find pathways towards cooperation, where governance turns into a tool for progress rather than an obstacle to it, where women are empowered rather than marginalized, and where the young are the agents of their own future rather than victims of it. MEI has grown dramatically in the last few years. Our policy center now includes 16 different programs, 30 resident scholars, and 150 non-resident scholars around the world. Our arts and culture center features programs with leading artists, musicians, and writers from the Middle East. Our education center teaches the leaders of tomorrow. I am confident that working together, we can build a future of peace, prosperity, and partnership, a future that all of us seek and that our younger generations demand. I want to thank all of today's speakers and awardees, everyone who helped make MEI's 75th celebration possible, and all of you who have joined us from different corners of the globe. Together, we can make a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for your remarks. It's now my honor to introduce Ms. Yael Lampert, the Acting Assistant Secretary of State for Near East Affairs. Lampert has had a distinguished career in the U.S. State Department, holding senior positions in multiple posts in the Middle East and Europe, as well as in the National Security Council. It's a pleasure to celebrate the Middle East Institute's 75th anniversary with you. I've been a longtime fan of both Paul Salem and Dick Clark, and this gala really highlights how MEI is thriving under their leadership. President Biden has articulated a strategic vision for U.S. engagement in the Middle East, committing us to a more sustainable set of long-term relationships with our partners. We're committed to revitalizing the institutions and alliances of the international order that provide regional and global stability and prosperity. At its core, the foundation of our relationship with the region must be an affirmative agenda focused on solving shared problems and building shared prosperity. And MEI understands that. The launch and incredible growth of your environment and water and economics and energy programs in the past year reflect the underlying reality that these global issues shape our relationships with our partners in the Middle East. Our revitalized partnerships will be critical to addressing these shared challenges. We're working together as we address COVID-19 and build back better global health security and pandemic preparedness for the future. To date, the United States has donated more than 19 million vaccines to the Middle East. President Biden supports the World Health Organization's ambitious goal to have 70% of the world's population vaccinated in 2022, and we're prepared to donate over a billion vaccines to help. We urge all of our partners to join us in making financial and vaccine donations to save lives and curb this pandemic catastrophe. And another of the president's top priorities is to set us on a long-term path to tackle climate change. And our partners across the region have been and will be critical to that effort. Last month at COP26 in Glasgow, we saw notable progress. 10 countries in the region adopted the Global Methane Pledge to reduce emissions of that powerful greenhouse gas 30% by 2030. And we also welcome Saudi Arabia's Net Zero by 2060 pledge. And with the UAE, we launched the Agricultural Innovation Mission for Climate Initiative to significantly increase investment in climate-smart agriculture and food systems innovation. Together, 
we can ensure that the global economy delivers prosperity to all as we build the sustainable energy economy of the future. We are prioritizing diplomatic, economic, and development tools to strengthen partnerships that must evolve beyond security. And we start from a strong foundation. There was over $157 billion, $157 billion in trade in goods between the United States and countries across the Middle East and North Africa in 2019. We share billions of dollars in investment. And nearly 1.4 million citizens of the Middle East and North Africa studied in America over the last 40 years. Our diplomacy continues to pay real dividends. For example, the normalization agreements with Israel have created new partnerships and opportunities. An exciting development has been establishing the India-Israel-UAE-United States Quad Partnership, underscoring how normalization brings promise and potential beyond the region. As Secretary Blinken has stressed, in all of our diplomacy, we will keep human rights at the forefront. We want to promote and support the growth and development of resilient, inclusive governments that treat civil society as a partner rather than an enemy, that promote the rights of women and girls and recognize the importance of human rights. Partners with legitimate institutions capable of delivering good and effective governance are necessary to defeat COVID-19, uh, ISIS, climate change, and other shared global challenges. The United States is committed to building, maintaining, and strengthening our partnerships in the Middle East and North Africa. We will remain deeply engaged, working to de-escalate regional tensions. Preventing nuclear proliferation remains one of the President's highest priorities, and that's why we're pursuing the path of meaningful diplomacy to ensure a return to mutual compliance with the JCPOA. Diplomacy is obviously essential to finding a lasting solution to our shared concerns about Iran's nuclear program and to ensuring Iran does not ever obtain a nuclear weapon. We will also continue to work with our partners to curb Iran's destabilizing behaviors in the region. Sustainable regional security includes durable solutions for the region's ongoing conflicts. We support multilateral diplomacy with partners and allies to advance UN-led peace processes in Libya, Syria, and Yemen. The upcoming elections in Libya, achieved through sustained effort, show the promise of diplomacy to de-escalate a conflict and build a process to give the Libyan people what they deserve, which is a legitimate, effective, and unified government. And we're also working to preserve the vision of a negotiated two-state solution and to rebuild our relationship with the Palestinians. Traditional security threats will remain, and we will continue to address them. But we can only confront the problem set of tomorrow if we broaden our partnerships to incorporate the President's vision of pursuing our interests and values, including the protection of human rights and promotion of fundamental freedoms. We can and should be able to pursue both at the same time. So these are just some of the many issues we are working on in the region, and MEI's work to expand the conversation on these issues is an important contribution to our efforts to identify the innovative solutions and new partnerships that we'll need as we build an affirmative agenda to tackle the shared challenges that define our future. So once again, congratulations on MEI's 75th anniversary, Elf Mabruk, and I wish you even greater success in the year ahead. Thank you, Ms. Lempert. And now on to our next speaker. His Excellency Dr. Anwar Gargash is recognized as a leading statesman in the United Arab Emirates and an important figure in Middle Eastern and global affairs. He's held many prominent positions during his long career, including, most recently, serving as the UAE's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. It's a pleasure to welcome His Excellency Dr. Anwar Gargash. Thank you for the kind introduction. I also want to thank the Middle East Institute's leadership and Board of Governance for inviting me to speak on this special occasion marking the Middle East Institute's 75th anniversary. Since its launch, the Middle East Institute has been an invaluable resource for information and knowledge about the Middle East, as well as an important venue for advancing understanding between the people of the Middle East and the United States. The Middle East and the United States have a long and significant history of deep connections, including diplomatic, political, and economic engagement. And I do think that these goals of understanding and dialogue 
are as important as ever. I think you will agree with me that the events that have been unfolding in the world over the last two years are challenging. In the Middle East, we are still dealing with the costs of COVID-19, the effects of climate change, the specific needs of a large youth population, and the range of other issues that require constructive engagement by both regional actors and the international community. What is more, the fact that COVID-19 came on our radar just two years ago reminds us to ask ourselves what other possible future challenges we should be preparing for. Some of these challenges will be ones that are caused by the pandemic. Others will be ones that have been exacerbated by the pandemic, but that were already present. Still others will be ones that we have not yet imagined. And there is, of course, much that countries can learn from each other. In many ways, we can work with each other in taking on these future challenges. As we consider these important questions, the key message I would like to convey from the United Arab Emirates is one of pragmatic optimism. We need to be both realistic about the scale of the challenges we are facing as a global community and at the same time hopeful and ambitious about the future. We know what we are capable of achieving if we embrace a mindset of openness and collaboration combined with hard work and robust planning. These characteristics have been at the heart of the UAE story as we celebrate our 50th anniversary. Looking back at just the last two years, we are proud to tell a story about a country that has made major strides to control the pandemic to maintain an open, strong, and resilient economy, and to stay committed to the principles of our moderate foreign policy. We are particularly proud of the work that we have done in close collaboration with partners to advance multilateral cooperation over these last two years. As this work is essential for putting the global recovery on the right track, our outlook has continued to be very practical, grounded in science and based on data and a need to adopt useful responses to the evolving world. This pragmatic but optimistic approach is entirely characteristic of the UAE's model of development. At the same time, we have continued to look outward by constantly working closely with others on critical issues from COVID-19 to climate change, as well as global health, humanitarian aid, and other issues that require a global response. This is an approach we will continue to pursue in partnership with our friends and allies, including during the UAE's term on the UN Security Council, which starts in January. And this leads me to emphasize how much the UAE values our continued close relationship with the United States. For it is in these challenging times that the strength and depth of that partnership has become clear. I believe that at the root of our cooperation is not just our wide range of shared interests, but also the fact that the UAE and the United States are both countries that prize good governance, openness, free markets, and collaboration. Furthermore, we are all united in wanting the same thing for the Middle East, stability and prosperity for its people. I'm confident that by continuing to engage in the region in response to the challenges of these times, the United States and its partners can help provide a brighter future for the region. In that spirit, we will continue to work together with the United States, with other like-minded countries, to help ensure that recent developments lead to the creation of a more stable and prosperous region. And as 2021 nears its end, we look back at another difficult year, but with hope and optimism. 
for what is to come in the future. I'd like to once again thank the Middle East Institute for inviting me to participate in this virtual gala. For 75 years, you have been helping to pursue a vision of peace and prosperity between our two regions. And this is a valuable and important effort. So I say congratulations to all of you, and it gives me great pleasure to wish the Middle East Institute a very happy 75th birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gargash, for sharing your insights. It's been an exceptional 75th anniversary for MEI. The Institute has published a wide array of articles, reports, and books, organized hundreds of policy panels, roundtables, and conferences, as well as numerous exhibits. Here are some messages from the Institute's friends and peers recognizing MEI's important contributions over the years. It really is a great pleasure uh, for me to offer my very hearty congratulations to the Middle East Institute that is celebrating its 75th anniversary. MEI has always played an important role fostering dialogue and asking the questions that matter about our region and its relationship with the United States. And over the years working in Washington DC with the Middle East Institute and I've been there for the last 15 years, I recognize the importance of having a nonpartisan think tank in Washington that can help shape a smarter Middle East policy. MEI is known for its convening power, bringing together deeply knowledgeable experts and policymakers from diverse backgrounds and perspectives. As Egypt's ambassador to America, as foreign minister of my country, and as an academician, I found MEI's evidence-based, insightful information invaluable and its rational, strategic analysis of high importance. MEI has consistently shown intellectual rigor and insightful analysis, but it isn't just about the scholars and experts. It is also about bringing up a new generation of young men and women, Americans and Arabs, who will specialize in the Middle East. I know from talking to students that MEI's intern program is one of the best around, and there is great competition for its graduates. It is now large, hybrid, effective, productive, and I personally very much appreciate the Middle East Journal, which is still one of the most important journals in the field of Middle Eastern studies. I want to thank the Middle East Institute for the work you do to continue to hold before us the need for American leadership and wise leadership in the relationship between the U.S. and countries in the Middle East. Best wishes to MEI for the next 75 years. I think I can speak for all of those who have been your consumers. I wish you a very, very success-filled next 75 years, because you're going to have that. To you, the Middle East Institute, happy 75th. Congratulations. More than a decade, MEI has recognized outstanding individuals and organizations from the region who have made a positive difference in their communities. This year, we're honored to recognize LIFE, a dynamic diaspora organization that's worked tirelessly to empower Lebanese citizens, advocate for reform, and support Lebanon through a series of crises. We're also recognizing Ms. Fauzia Kufi, a remarkable women's rights activist, a former peace negotiator, and a member of the Afghan parliament. Presenting this year's Isam M. Faris Award for Excellence to the LIFE organization and its board chair, Ms. May Nasrallah, is Mr. Nujad Faris. He is chairman of Wedge Equities and a member of MEI's Board of Governors. The Faris family established this award in their father's name in 2011 to honor his remarkable achievements. It gives me great pleasure today to honor life and its accomplished board chair, May Nasrallah, with the Isam M. Faris Award for Excellence. LIFE was founded in 2009 by Lebanese professionals in the diaspora. Its goals are to build a network of business leaders and young professionals to nurture the future generation of Lebanese, to promote the development of Lebanon's economy, and to advocate for social and economic reform. 
12 years after its founding, life has done all of that and so much more. At a time of unimaginable hardship in Lebanon, life has offered support to thousands of Lebanese in need. From youth unable to afford an education because of the currency collapse to the victims of the Beirut port explosion. Life joined forces with fellow Lebanese and other Middle East diaspora organizations following the blast to form a unified humanitarian effort. The Beirut Emergency Fund raised nearly $9 million to help rebuild households and small businesses, as well as to support hospitals and other medical and mental health needs. As the country's economic situation continues to deteriorate, LIFE has expanded its already robust scholarship program to focus on undergraduate students in Lebanon, providing funds that benefit both students and universities. In 10 years, LIFE has invested $8 million in education, the linchpin to success for so many young Lebanese. LIFE's 1,000 members have also brought their tremendous expertise to their role of nurturing the future generations of Lebanon. They've provided and continue to provide career advice, mentoring support, and networking opportunities for these young students. Over the past few years, LIFE has provided more than $1.3 billion in microgrants to small and medium enterprises and created nearly 1,300 jobs through their tech initiatives. I could go on because the list of LIFE's accomplishment is long, but I think it's clear how invaluable their role has been and continues to be in providing support and assistance to so many Lebanese. Board Chair May Nasrallah has led this remarkable effort. And that's no surprise, because she herself is a star in the field of finance and business, ranked among the most influential Arab businesswomen today. She spent 15 years in investment banking with Morgan Stanley, before founding De Novo Corporate Advisors, a Middle East corporate finance and M&A advisory boutique. May, I am honored to present you as Chairwoman of Life with the Issam M. Faris Award for Excellence not only for life's incredible achievements and contributions over the past decade, but more urgently for its powerful role in assisting Lebanon today and in helping grow the generation that will build the better Lebanon of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Nijan, for the introduction and for your kind words. I would also like to thank the Middle East Institute for this humbling, prestigious award. Thank you also, Paul, and for the entire Middle East Institute team for your partnership and friendship that we have enjoyed over the past years of working together. As mentioned, LIFE is an organization that was founded over 11 years ago with the objective of bringing Lebanese finance professionals in the diaspora together to connect, nurture the next generation, and to promote Lebanon. Over the years, LIFE grew, developed, and evolved to become a preeminent professional organization for the Lebanese in the diaspora, bringing together Lebanese leaders in various disciplines, senior professionals, and aspiring young ones to connect and provide a support network to one another in an increasing global presence. Today, we have over a dozen chapters all over the world in numerous sectors, and our membership is ever growing, surpassing a thousand and looking to double in the short years to come. Our Life Scholarship Program has supported hundreds of students over the past decade, adopting outstanding Lebanese students with demonstrable financial need. We ensure that they access the top education in order to achieve their career aspirations and become the leaders of the future. Our scholars receive far more than financial aids. They receive mentoring, career advice, networking opportunities, job functions, and access to the life network overall. To date, we have supported over 550 students at 50 partner universities in nine countries. And our focus has shifted to undergraduates in Lebanon from graduates internationally, particularly as the situation in Lebanon continued to worsen and, and the needs increased in our local communities. This academic year alone, we are supporting approximately 280 students, a marked increase from previous years where we used to support tens of students. 75% of these students are now in Lebanon, mostly in the undergraduate programs. We continue to hope to grow those numbers and continue to meet the ever-growing needs of our community of young Lebanese aspiring to continue their education. When the explosion happened in Lebanon in August 4, we also shifted a lot of our attention and focus towards allocating substantial time, effort, and resources in support of those affected by that explosion. 
we raised approximately $9 million in partnership with like-minded organizations such as SEAL, LabNet, Jamhur Alumni Group, Great America Foundation. And to collectively we formed a unified humanitarian effort called the Beirut Emergency Fund. That fund had substantial impact on the ground. We supported five hospitals in allowing them to come back and operate and meet the ever-growing need of uh, patients. We supported 24 NGOs in a lot of the efforts that they were doing on the ground. We rehabilitated about 1,500 homes and supported 250 SMEs to allow them to continue their operations in this dire time. Overall, we benefited over 31,000 individuals, 7,500 of which benefited from mental and physiosocial support. Our promote pillar continues to work very, very hard on the ground and it aims to stimulate job creation and alleviate social and economic hardship in Lebanon by concentrating on activities in three major areas, empowering vulnerable businesses and promising SMEs to scale up and compete in a global economy, creating outsourcing job opportunities in Lebanon by upskilling local talent and mobilizing the global life network, supporting sustainable economic development projects that alleviate also social and economic hardships in Lebanon. And that um, pillar has impacted over a thousand jobs through our micro grants to support SMEs. We've created over 1,250 jobs through our different tech initiatives, through our boot camps and academies, working with Cody, SE Factory, and Halliburton Academy. They provide students with technical training and job placement, which we have achieved over 90% job placement rates since we started our work together. We've also worked on outsourcing programs that have created jobs to keep Lebanese gainfully employed inside of Lebanon and supporting them in tech and finance staff functions domiciled inside the country. 34 SMEs mentored by senior management consultants at Bain and McKinsey over the course of 2021 has created a really interesting new set of support network that we provided in Lebanon. This collaboration takes the form of financial contributions, in-kind donations, partnerships, and mentorship programs, or technical assistance from large corporates, Facebook being one of them. As of this past year, we've also established a new pillar, which is called Advocate. And we've established this to provide thought leadership and impact on economic and financial policy matters at the international scale. In a short year of presence, and as an independent pillar, Advocate has joined forces with the Middle East Institute to establish a Lebanon focus program and has published a number of papers and thought pieces that have garnered attention and recognition. An example is the paper written about the government subsidies and the need for an orderly transition. We've also established the Life Advocate Lebanon Monitor, which is currently distributed to over 6,000 recipients. And we further engaged and continue to engage with multiple stakeholders globally on economic and financial related matters related to Lebanon. I'd like to pause here and make sure I articulate one particular point, which is life has always been and remains an apolitical organization. Our purpose is to continue to provide a support network towards a brighter future for compatriots and younger generations. Today, our role and responsibilities are ever increasing, particularly as the situation in Lebanon is ever declining. Our commitment is unwavered to continue our path of growth and relevance and impact. We continue to represent a beacon of hope to what a Lebanon and a Lebanese people are capable of and how we can together be a force for positive change for Lebanon that we all aspire for. Thank you very much for your time and again for the prestigious award. Presenting this year's MEI Visionary Award to Ms. Fawzia Kufi is Mr. Saad Mohsani. Mr. Mohsani is CEO and founder of the Mobi Group, an international news and entertainment organization launched in Afghanistan in 2002. He is a widely recognized advocate for free press, civil society, and women's rights. He also serves on MEI's International Advisory Council. Thank you to the Middle East Institute for recognizing the achievements of Ms. Fawzia Kufi, who has championed so many causes over the years, fighting for not only women's rights, but also free speech, tolerance, and minority rights. She has been effective in all spheres, including as a member of the Afghan parliament, a civil society activist, and as a peace negotiator. I met Ms. Kufi when we first launched our media outlets some 17 years ago. 
and would describe Ms. Kufi as fearless, tough, and determined. She's an example of what an Afghan woman can achieve if given the opportunity. I'm proud to call her a friend. Ms. Kufi, I'm honored to present you with the MEI Visionary Award and recognition of your extraordinary contributions to the promotion of women's rights and good governance in Afghanistan, and for your steadfast courage and commitment to human rights in the face of adversity. Afghanistan will be proud. Salams, and thank you, my friend, Mr. Mosini, for that introduction. And special thanks to the Middle East Institute, Mr. Richard Clark, Paul Salam, and everyone who is watching us today. And congratulations to my fellow awardees, Live and Ms. May Nasrallah. I'm so pleased to be able to share this platform and also a platform for a better future for the region and beyond. I accept this award for an opportunity to give more voice to the voiceless people of Afghanistan. Such recognition certainly bring more focus and attention to the miserable situation of human rights in my country. As I speak to you today, people of Afghanistan are suffering from multidimensional problems, from poverty to humanitarian crisis, to severe human rights violation, displacement, and of course, people who are at risk for them to leave the country safely and oppression. It's a time for us an international community to get together and to watch the situation on the ground. The Taliban must deliver to their commitments. International community need to hold Taliban accountable for what they have committed before negotiation and during the negotiation. The Taliban must ensure that there is a uh, inclusive government representing all segments of society, including women. They must ensure that they respect the diversity of Afghanistan. Afghanistan today is not Afghanistan that the Taliban first took over in 1996 to 2001, with the mercy of education, awareness, access to media, access to social media, and of course, access to institutions the people of Afghanistan have transformed. They are more aware about their rights. And today you see, despite all the risks, people, especially women of Afghanistan, protest on the streets demanding for their rights. That is a sign for a transformed Afghanistan. We need to listen to those uh, people in Afghanistan. We need to um, give them a voice. And an international community must make sure that they use their leverage, the leverage for recognition of Taliban government, the leverage for giving the seat in the, and representation in the United Nations, and of course the monetary leverage to make sure that the Taliban are committed to their commitments. Only through an inclusive government, which is able to respect the rights of every individual, especially women and religious minorities and all segments of the society, that we can bring prosperity in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a country of diverse group, and only through inclusion that Afghanistan can live in peace with itself and in peace with the rest of the world. Now that the country is suffering from harsh winter and humanitarian crisis, I urge the world to continue to support the people of Afghanistan directly, but also make sure that the Taliban actually deliver to their commitments. We do not want Afghanistan once again to fall in the military extremism and, and threaten not only the world's security, but the security of its own citizens. Once again, I would like to thank the Middle Eastern Institute and those who gave voice through such recognition to the women of Afghanistan. We want the world to um, understand that the women's rights in Afghanistan is not only women's rights, but it's beyond that. It's a matter of security, not only in the region, but beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you to this year's honorees, Life and Fauzia Kufi. We're so inspired by the work you've done to improve the lives of so many. Thank you also to our award presenters, Nijad Faris and Saad Mohsini. And this concludes MEI's 75th anniversary celebration and awards ceremony. Thank you for joining us. It's been an honor to serve as MC to mark MEI's historic 75th year. And now I'll hand the program back to my friend, MEI President, Paul Salem. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you for your wonderful hosting. And I would like to sincerely thank the generous sponsors who helped make this program possible. And thank you for joining us. 
and for your support as we embark on the next 75 years of working toward a more peaceful, prosperous Middle East and towards strengthened relations between our two regions. We send you our best wishes for health and happiness as we head into the new year. Thank you for joining us.